So here's a little video just to give you a peek at the Excel spreadsheet I use, or the main one I use, for analysing my stocks and shares. And give you a little look along the top line. So we've got the on the left, the, uh, the London Stock Exchange codings for the companies. And across the top, I've recorded uh, really using uh, MSN Money, Yahoo Finance, etc., Morningstar. Uh, they'll give you the, the one year lows and highs and lows of five years, the, the maximum high and the maximum low that the stock has been uh, in their recorded time. And also take a note of the PE history. Ideally looking for a PE ratio, pro price to earnings ratio of under 15. If a stock's higher than that, it's generally quite overpriced. It's either going to have a lot of growth potential or it's just been a bit too popular and its returns are very low. Um, ROIC is the, is the return on capital. You'll find that figure on MSN Money on the analysis page on a stock. And uh, also along that, that page as well as the debt to equity ratio. Um, ratios are over 2 are really quite high. Uh, ideal ratios are really under 0.5. Uh, it means that the company is quite heavily in debt if it is much higher than that 2 figure. You obviously one on there at uh, 3.7 looking down the list. Uh, buy price is based on rule one, Phil Town, uh, following Warren Buffett's rules. And I'm going to do a little analysis a little later to show you how you arrive at that figure. And uh, payback time is taken from Phil Town's uh, website, which if you just tap in the numbers for the earnings per share, the growth rates, etc., it'll give you how many years it's going to take to get your money back. Uh, FTF time 10, having a little look at this one as the free cash flow per share times 10 to give you some sort of idea of pricing to working closer to intrinsic values. A little scroll across. So the numbers I tend to use for that uh, important one by price or the MOS figure as uh, Phil Town calls it, uh, really down to these. So I take the, the forward PE. If you look on MSN money on the analysis page on a stock, uh, towards the bottom of the left hand side it'll give you a forward PE, a forward price to earnings uh, and a, a forward S earnings per share is on the right hand side of the page on a little box, sometimes they'll say oh it's, the analysts are thinking it's a buy, hold or, or whatever. Uh, the growth rate, growth rate is the trickiest one to calculate um, but quite often I will use on that same page um, from uh, MSN Money if you click on the, the growth one under analysis and I take the, the five year net income uh, growth rate figure as really how much the, the, uh, the share has grown over the over five years on an annual basis as, as the most accurate one on the basis that uh, turnover is vanity and profit is sanity. So the, the net income is the equity is the one to really look at. Other figures that are quite interesting to look at and just be aware of because sometimes the, the sums don't work out quite so well. Uh, are things like uh, let's get that to scroll right. Uh, the current ratio is the current assets over the current liabilities, the book value per share, and the price to book value. So this one I just tap the little formulas into Excel and it just calculates a lot of it for me. And then the future of EPS. This is all part of the calculations. That's how I build the uh, the calculator together to give me the sums. Okay, all right, so having a little scroll scroll back through. So um, often in comparing a share, I'll work out, I'll try to get that buy price, the MOS figure, as what's the best price, and anything under that is the really the price to really look to to buy a share at. Um, however, if the figures are coming out way adrift to what the actual share price is, or what I sort of feel the indication is, I would have generally have a look at that uh, the current book price and see where the share price is comparing to the, the book price. And if it's it's well and truly under, then it's obviously going to be a good time to buy. It might well in some cases be slightly over, but you still feel it's quite a good time to buy because maybe there's quite a good dividend on that. But then you need to be aware of uh, a dividend traps if the price is, is too high and it could either have the dividend reduced a long way or the stock price could fall dry quite dramatically. Um, don't want that page. Let's go to... That one. This is the bigger spreadsheet calculator, but this is really just to show you the uh, the calculation figures of the of the MOS figure, the buy price. So first of all, you need to calculate the future share value, and an Excel spreadsheet type in just equals FV. It then comes up with the um, 
open brackets, you would then type in the growth rate taken from MSN money or however you calculated it that you think the company's going to have, comma, 10, because we're looking at 10 years into the future, then go comma, comma, and then it's minus the uh, forward earnings per share. Again, I could take that one from MSS money, MSN money and uh, just close the brackets. Then work out the future stock price, which is the future share value, which you've just calculated, times the PE, the price to earnings ratio. Uh, the intrinsic fair value, or the sticker price, which is probably if you think about the, the price on a car windscreen if you're buying a car, um, is you type in equals PV, open, it'll come up open brackets. We're looking really at 15% as a minimum return as we kind of work backwards. It's the PV is then previous value. So 15%, comma, 10 number of years, comma, comma, minus the future value that you calculated above. Close the brackets and that'll give you a, give you an intrinsic fair value number or the sticker price. For the, for the buy price or the MOS figure, you're really looking at half of that. So you just divide it by two and that's then the, the, the figure you're really looking to aim to buy a share at. And if it's well above that figure, it's not really going to be a buy. I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview of calculating the intrinsic fair value, the intrinsic fair, what a mouthful, intrinsic fair value, and hope you find that useful. You can find uh, the full details on Phil Town's rule number one investing uh, website where you can actually download these figures and he'll run through step by step on how to uh, actually calculate the figures. But that's a nice snapshot view of how the sums actually work.